15 years ago when I was at law school in England. Any lawyers here? Anyone? Good. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we all feel collectively sorry for you, so it's... it's <clears throat> I was at law school doing my bit and uh, I was hating it, really. And, uh, but I still had to do it. Why did I have to do it? Because you have to keep your options open. That's what my dad had always told me. Keep your options open. Do law school, keep your options open. I mean, never mind that I had no idea what I wanted to do afterwards. <laughs> keep them all open. It's a fundamental overvaluing of optionality in this logic. All you must do all the time, just keep your options open. So in that spirit, I was, uh, a friend of mine uh, sent me tickets to come to his wedding, which was nice, in Colorado, so I came. And while I was here, someone said as an offsite, they said, well, if you do decide to stay in America, you should, you know, whatever. And I didn't hear the end of it because I just, if, like it was an option, like I could just not do law school. And so it sent me into this spin for 20 minutes when I took out a piece of paper, I said, what would you do if you could just do one thing, but anything? And so I brainstormed this list, 20 minutes, all these ideas all over the place, right? And then when I looked at it, what I noticed was not so much what was on it, but what wasn't on it. The law school wasn't on the list. <laughs> so what do you do? You just get consumed, well, you know, that's what everyone else is doing, that's the inertia, you've got to do it, and so on. And uh, what I thought, my great insight was, I better call my parents. So I dialed the 15-digit number back to England, and I uh, wonder who's going to answer, and my, my mother answers, fortunately. And she listens, she says, I think you better talk to Dad. <laughs> so he comes onto the phone, and he listens too, which if I'm all together honest, is not entirely like him. He listens. And then, <laughs> then he pulls this out, because all Englishmen quote Shakespeare over <laughs> breakfast of tea and crumpets, right? <laughs> right? He says, he says, son, to thine own self be true. <laughs> he, says, he says, you know, we've always said that to you. He's never said that to me before <laughs> in his life. <laughs> but he pulls it out at that moment. And he adds to it this, this is word for word exactly what happened. He said, do what is right, let the consequences follow. Well, all right then, Dad, you know. None of this keep your options open, go to law school sort of message. Well, that's what I did. I quit law school right there, started a different life. For me, it was an important, highly important shift. It was the distinction between living a good life full of lots of good things, nothing wrong with that, unless it keeps you from the essential path, your highest point of contribution, where you're not consumed with doing everything popular now, but just the right few things in the right way, for the right reasons at the right time. That is a totally different, fundamentally different paradigm, a way of thinking, a way of working. This is essentialism. It's to operate and design your life around what is essential and to have, as a result of discovering what is essential, the courage to say no to what is non-essential. And as a result of that, to have a legitimate claim to be able to break through to the highest level of contribution in our careers and in our lives.